I'm currently hiking up Mount Wellington in Tasmania. Down behind me you can see Hobart. Anyway, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about the most recent video, which was about me drifting through space with a frog and what a frog can see that we can't. So one of the frequently asked questions I've seen is, can a frog really detect a single photon? And the answer is yes. As far back as the 1970s, we knew from research where we would take a frog's eye out, expose it to a single photon, and see that it would generate a nerve impulse, we knew that a frog could detect a single quantum of light, which is also called a photon. I'll put links to that research in the description. You know, nowadays we're actually discussing making very sensitive light detectors using frog's eyes. So you could make a hybrid electronic bio hybrid sensor that could detect single photons, which is just incredible. It blows my mind because we normally have to make photomultiplier tubes, very complicated, expensive apparatus in order to detect single photons. So how far away would you need to be to actually receive single photons from the sun? Well, a brief calculation in my head says probably something like 10 to the 20 meters. And that's a long way. It is way out there, well, well past Pluto. Normally when I'm explaining the inverse square law, I talk about it like making peanut butter toast, where the peanut butter is like light and the toast is space. So initially when you take that scoop of peanut butter and you stick it down on one part of the toast, the intensity of peanut butter is very high because there's a lot of peanut butter and not spread over a lot of toast. But as you spread that peanut butter across the toast, it's like the light spreading out through space. And so the amount of peanut butter gets thinner and thinner across the whole toast. Now imagine you had gigantic toast, so you just kept spreading this one scoop of peanut butter across the whole thing. Well then what you'd end up with is a very, very, very thin layer of peanut butter. And I guess the idea is, can you infinitely spread the peanut butter? In the case of peanut butter, you can't. And in the case of light, you also can't. So if you make that light more and more spread over the whole of space, what you end up finding is that there's like a, a fundamental piece of light that you can't go smaller than. In a similar way, you could talk about spreading water out thinner and thinner and thinner over a surface and eventually you'd find there are water molecules separated by gaps where it's totally dry. And this is exactly the same as what's happening with that frog. It's seeing individual pieces of light, those quanta or photons, separated by the darkness because those quanta have become so separated over space that they're no longer creating a stream. There's no longer many hitting your eye at once. That I think is, is pretty amazing. In a lot of the comments, I saw some really good examples of things that are quantized, like charge. You can only get charge in multiples of 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So what would happen if you came over to your friend's house and he said, look, in this box, I have a charge of 2.4 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. He would say, no, that can't be. You're lying because charge only comes in multiples of 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So either you have one of those, you have two of those, you have five of those, but you can't have half or one and a half. Now people propose some other ideas like, is knowledge quantized or thoughts quantized? Eh, I think that's a dodgier territory. One of my favorite comments of things that are quantized is solace. There's a quantum of solace. That's a Bond movie, and I don't really know what it means. How can you have an indivisible unit of solace? I haven't seen the movie though, so maybe, maybe they explain that. Something else I should have mentioned is that when the frog sees those flashes of light, they're all different colors. They're kind of random colors of the rainbow, with the most common colors being in the red part of the spectrum. The photons the sun emits most often are of the red color. So you get a smattering around the spectrum, but you get more red photons and say fewer blue photons. The thing is, these flashes would be distinctly one color. You wouldn't get a sun-colored flash because that would have all the colors of the rainbow. So you would see like a red flash or a blue flash and they would be only one wavelength when the frog saw them. You know, one of the things I keep thinking about as I'm walking around in Tasmania, I'm thinking about the most recent video I made about the most venomous species living in warm climates. And how when I went to talk to the snake expert, Professor Rick Shine, he said, there are only three species of snake in Tasmania and they're all deadly venomous. Something else I regret in hindsight is having the photon flashes last a particular duration. Really, they should just be infinitesimally short, because it's the arrival of a single particle 
I saw some people ask, is that why we see the stars twinkle at night? Is it because we're seeing individual photons? The answer is no. The stars twinkle because their light is refracted as it passes through the atmosphere. There are hotter and cooler parts of the atmosphere, so the light kind of scatters around, it wiggles around. Sometimes a brighter part will hit your eye and then sometimes it'll get deflected so you only see a dimmer part of that star. So the point is that's much more of a refraction to the atmosphere effect. You know something else this walk has been making me think? That maybe I should start a series of videos called One Take Wonders, where I basically set up the camera and I try to explain a particular concept. Maybe I use a whiteboard or something, but the key is that I don't turn the camera off. Obviously afterwards I would have to edit it so much to cut in just the brilliant bits, but the point is I would force myself to explain it the best I can with the materials I have on hand and it wouldn't take me forever to make it. You know, like the last video, I spent so much time faffing around with effects, I lost sight of the bigger picture, what is really important in order to understand that, that light is quantized. Let me know what you think. Would that be a good idea, bad idea? I'd keep doing like the big Veritasium productions, but I would also do some productions on this channel to just say, explain some concepts in hopefully the best way I know how. You know something else I like doing? Writing scary headlines about myself when I'm on some kind of adventure, like Canadian boy found dead in the woods. Man makes video on snakes, but forgets to bring tensor bandage with him when hiking. YouTuber falls off cliff while not watching where he's going because he's filming himself. You know, these sorts of things. Now coming up, I want to make a video about how we first realized that light must come in packets. It wasn't by doing any kind of experiment where we were looking at stars or drifting away or using the eye of a frog. It was just trying to explain why hot objects emit the light that they do. And this is called black body radiation. And that's something I would like to tackle in a new episode on One Veritasium. So I promise I will try to do better at making these explanations so clear that you cannot help but follow them. And I'll try to not get absorbed in my own making of a cool looking film, which maybe doesn't teach anyone anything. This whole thing reminds me that education is best when it's a conversation. I can try to imagine all the things my audience is thinking, but at the end of the day, my mind is not theirs. And when I see the questions in the comments, I just feel like I could have done a better job if maybe we had sat down and had a chat about it. Anyway, that's why comments are so important. So I really appreciate your feedback. And uh, I want to say thanks to everyone for um, subscribing and hanging out with me these last couple of years. Hopefully we'll have many more good years to come.